Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I don't know where you're watching me from. My name is Peter Berwa. If today is your first time watching me, this program is called Inspiring Africa, where I bring a lot of people all over the world, US, Canada, Africa, where they can be able to share their story to ignite and also empower our continent. This is one of the things that we can be able to do to help our brothers home those of us who are able to use the same journey and people are willing to come, we want to also help you for you to also learn a lot of things from us. Today I have my brother. Um, his name is um, Maso Oseyabwa. In fact, I met him on Facebook and he's one of the productive people. I just want us to listen to him as to how we can able to share um his story with us if you're watching me right now i just wanted to share this live video so that they can able to ignite and also inspire other people so that you can able to learn certain things from it my brother welcome to peter bell tv uh, thank you big bro thank you cinema <laughs> why are you calling me cinema <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i say now you're in the united states of america yeah. In fact, um, the journey of a, a, a lot of people back home in Africa, Nigeria, they are also thinking of how they can be able to use school to, you know, stay through this journey. If you have any question for him, I just want you to put it in the comment section. I will take like five minutes for asking certain questions. And um, you're going to learn a lot. So my brother, where where do you come from in Kumasi? Yeah, like I'm at um, DHM, so I was at DHM, so around airport roundabout. Oh, yeah. I know that place. Where we do for state US. Yeah, 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 that area. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So in terms of your academic journey, can you take us through where you started, your GHS, your senior high school, and then oh, how you okay. enter into the university? Oh, um, for real, well, like, uh, I have been in like Kumasi for so long. Uh, I was born there and like, um, I went to my GHS at uh, very so MEGHS around K University area. So we call it Remas. It's around Kensington Krono. Where we so? Yeah, where we so. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So after that, you know, uh, I proceed to a senior high school at the school of like Ajusmai Senior High School. Oh, okay. So you completed Ajusmai Senior High School. Yeah. So what program were you doing? Uh, business. So you did business? Yeah. Uh, I told you not to. Nah, business, business student. <laughs> oh, OK. All my life I've been business, like any place that I'm, I'm doing business here. Yeah. Is there any reason why you want to remain in business? Do you have any passion or do you have any reason why you want to remain in business? Yeah, like, um. You see, there's a lot of opportunities um, in Africa where, like, um, if you see that kind of opportunity in terms of, like, the marketing-wise and how, like, you can use some products and other key things to, like, penetrate. You see, when you are in Canada now, you see like, how, how Walmart is doing. They have been, like, growing. Mm -hmm. and it's like when you are an African and you are, like, uh, somebody from like Africa, you you don't you don't you don't you, you don't have the leverage to think big. Okay. So I I always like think big outside the box. Like mm. what people see, it cannot be achieved. That is what I'm thinking. So anything relating to like the business field and leading it to like the range of Africa, like leading to going to Africa, going to the worldwide, that is me. So how can I do that? So I'll mm -hmm. need an entrepreneur skills, I'll need a business background, I'll need a marketing, I'll need anything relating to those kind of stuff in order to like equip myself. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so after Ed Josuman, where how did you face any struggle in your senior high school? Some people are watching you, people who are watching you are senior high school, university students, some are in student. What were some of the things that you were doing in senior high school and how was your grade and everything was? Yeah, um, in my school, uh, just my is at I just so so, uh, before me going to the school, there was a privilege for me to go to a different school because mm -hmm. all my friends were going to 
the UAS, the PC, um, the other big big schools in Ghana. Uh-huh. So I had the privilege to like go to um, CAS, but I didn't choose it and go because I saw it that um, it's a journey of hope. It's a journey of like a destination, a, a journey of purpose. Uh-huh. So I don't want to mislead a place where God have planted me to go. Then like I didn't get the message or I didn't get what I have to get from there. So I decided to go to Ajusumai. And when I was there, it's, it's looked like like all the three years in school, I already knew what is going to happen there. So my life was lived differently. So people who knows me know what I'm talking about right now. What I lived there, somebody called it um, a legacy because I was with some five schools, um, school students in Yajusumai where I, I grouped them. Like we have general students, science students, business students, and I was only the business student among these guys. So they are good academically. They are the people who are first, second positions in their class. And I combine them as friends. So when I wake up to go and study early in the morning, like 2 a.m., 1 a.m., then I'll go and I'll wake up, I'll go and wake them up. They are in different halls, they are in different places, but I'll go and wake them up because I see the big picture. I told them that we are not learning because of a first or second position or what's it. Let's think outside the box. Let's think ahead. Mm. So I was that kind of guy who would be there for people, who would be there for that. So during that time, I quite remember my first exams. I didn't do well. I was third position in my class. That is SHS1. I was third position in that class. And my friends did also well. But moving to... um second term then i begin to um range to second position to second position then first position first position first position so it reached to a time that i don't have to compete for position mm. but i have to think um about writing and of deck about writing my words when i was informed to because some of the syllables I have been able to complete it. I have been able to read ahead. I have been able to like study on my own. I can't remember. Um, I was having a friend who is currently also in the US. He's called Christopher Kulimi. Mm. Um, he was a general student, and like we, we were sharing information on how opportunities, scholarship opportunities. Then but then we were informed to getting going to form three to write our wasi. So he had the passion to travel. He had the passion to, when we were talking, he had the passion to travel. Then one day, um, there was an exam that we, we it, it came to like our region in Ajusuma and Kumasi Asante region that best five people will go for a leadership in South Africa. Uh-huh. So um, I was with these friends and I told them that um, I don't think I have to do this. So we, we had a meeting on Saturday. I can't remember that Saturday with my friends. Uh, it was entertainment time in SHS, so we had that kind of meeting. Then I said that uh, I don't want to go. So those who want to go, let's push them, let's support them. So we talked to the uh, the school headmaster, uh, Mr. Mufat, then and one um, teacher called. Um, they 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 came in and they helped the two guys who were very very interested. They were very very interested in this leadership to go to South Africa. So they wrote the exams and they passed, and two of them passed out within Asante region. They passed, so it was then a final one for the whole of Ghana to select the best five two. And one 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 of my friend had it. That is the Christopher. He had it and he went to um, South Africa after we completed our wasi. Uh-huh. When he was there, then he saw that there was a big picture for him to write SAT. So he wrote a SAT. Then he get a good score. Then he proceed to get a school in the U.S. Okay. So after SHS in 2017, we were really talking. We were really having some conversation and talking. So when he got um, he got his visa and he was going to the U.S., I escorted him to airport because I stay around the airport. So I escorted him to Kumasi Airport in Ghana, and I hugged him and I said that. A day will come. I also travel. So he went to the U.S. in New York for his undergrads. And 
during oh, that time. Okay, so he went to undergrad while yeah. you're in senior high school. Oh, okay. No, uh, when we finished our senior high school, senior then high school. he went. Oh, okay. So, so that means you two was also looking for other opportunities. Yeah, I was looking so, for other opportunities, but mm. um, I didn't wanted to use uh SAT. Okay. He used the SAT. I didn't wanted to use the SAT. I wanted to use my um was the resource and my transcript because i i built a good um transcript when i was in the shs so yeah. i could have used that one and write good essays in order to like also go to my undergrad in the us but when i tried to start the application then i was having a school father he's in china now he's yeah. called michael then he said that there's also an opportunity for you to like school in the china that was in 2017 when we completed our um, WASI. So I was oh, talking okay. to Michael and he was saying that there's opportunity to get a full scholarship in China. Then I tried to apply for the China, but something happened with my passport because um, when I apply my passport, it delayed. It delayed. I paid uh... an extra fees, unquote, unquote, but still it delayed. So I didn't know what happened. And he told me that, Maxo, you are, we are getting to 2018 and you haven't bought any Ghana uh, university forms. You don't have to waste that time. So I would advise you to buy at least three forms. If you buy three forms, like Legon, UCC, Ken West, you will buy another stuff. As you are waiting for the China um, school too. So Give you the, the, the decision and everything then sure. so that you will not waste that year. That is it. So... I always have people who are ahead of me and I'm ready to learn. And I always ask questions. I always ask questions. So when he told me that I think deep about it, I said, oh, this is a good thing. That is great. So I bought forms, I bought Legon, and I bought Winiba. So I didn't want it to school in um university and um UCC. I wanted to go to Legon or Winiba okay. for my, my business program. Okay. Yeah. Because the grade that I, I was having, if I wanted to go to any school, I could have got it. Okay. Uh, but I want I wanted to go to a place where what I wanted to achieve would be able to achieve. Mm. Then um, um, the China application update came that I had a, I had a scholarship, but they needed my passport, and still it was delaying. So the best thing for me to do is to decline it and proceed. Um, coming to the university. So he saw, he said that after the university in Ghana for my undergrad for the four years, getting scholarship to school in, in the Europe, China, US is very, very good. The best thing for me to do is get a good grade mm -hmm. on, for my undergrad. So when he said that to me, then I said, that, okay, let me let me go for my undergrad in, in Ghana. So, so when, you're, when, when, when you're doing your undergrad, was it, were you really having the passion of studying in, yeah, uh, because I started it after SHS, so I really knew that after school from uh, undergrad, I'm go I'm going to travel regardless. So you, the, when, whilst you're in the university, you you think of like after school you are going. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Nothing can stop that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can stop the ideas. Who times has come? I think Victor Holocaust was Victor who goes was Yeah, yeah, back. Victor. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so you went to a uh, university in Ghana, I yeah. think, um, Winneba. Yeah, Winneba. How was the studies like? Yeah, um, like, I got admission in Legon, I got admission in Winneba, then I choose the Winneba. Based on that, I also wanted to have something called educational background. Because um, as I was thinking to travel to, I was also thinking of having educational background towards my business program that I'm going to have. And um, Legon didn't have that. I had business administration in Legon, but I didn't have education attached to it. But I had it at Uniba where I had um, education attached to it. Whilst that, was be, like, that would be like a very big thing for me. For where okay, I so apply the, the business and the education attached education. to it. So you can teach. You are and at the same time, you can be in the business field. In the so that, mm. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So that I'm not being limited because where I wanted to go, I don't want to be limited in other areas. I always wow. want to dream big and think big. So um, my time in the Winneba school 
it wasn't easy for me because when I got there, I thought that, oh, SHS, we are able to pass. Like, it, it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be that, like, difficult. So my first message at the University of um, Education, Uniba, um, that was common skills and others. I, 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 I almost failed. I had um, 16 over 40. So when my... you went to when you went to university, the first exam that came, the results was very poor. Yeah, that was my missing my missing exam, not the final exam. The missing okay, the I missing, had a very okay. poor, yeah, poor um, result for one course, com skills. Um, I had sixteen over forty. Then I was like worried. So it doesn't mean that the exam which is over sixty, and for you to for you to get an A, you must get eighty plus to get an A. So to get an A with 16, now you have 60 marks for exams. How, how are you going to? So even if you get 60, 60, that would be like 76, which would be mm -hmm. B, B, B plus. And it's not easy to get English like 60, 60. So that was when um, I began to rethink. I began to uh, put myself together again because when you go to the um, undergrads, there are certain things you think like, oh, it's okay, like it's life, like you are in new place. If you don't take care, you might not like end well because the moment that like you delay or you let something like block your focus, getting to where you want to reach, it's very, very difficult for you. So I begin to put myself together, restructure my plans and how I have to study. So I begin to study on my own. I begin to study on my own, going to the library. I was using the library, researching and doing a lot of stuff. So the people like with me at, at the hall, they started to call me librarian, 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 Max the librarian, because they didn't know what I had for my mission. They didn't know what was pushing me because something which is bigger ahead of me and I'm going to like just put it at the beginning of my undergrad. That was very, very bad for for that to happen. So I begin to put myself together, then start to learn, start to learn, start to learn. And my first exams, I had um, first class 3.5. I had 3.5 for my first exams because the boost boosted me. What result, the result that I, I got, it boosted me to know there is no you. There is more much in you that you can do better. Start to learn, start to ask questions, start to research things, get things that will help you to proceed, to learn more. and to attain whatever that you want to achieve. So that was where I started. Then when I reached to level 200, then I became um, that, uh, that mindset of like applying to the US, to okay. applying to the US because I, I built a nice GPA and I begin to have some friends who are also good as I was having in the SHS. So I also built a friends that we stayed together. So, we are having a quote that we don't sleep when we are tired. We sleep when we are done. We don't sleep when we are tired. We sleep when we are done. Don't sleep. If you sleep, it's a trap. So these were the things that we were doing in order to like boost ourselves and like achieve whatever that we want to achieve. Mm. So in terms of university, somebody is watching us. Now you're in the United States with full scholarship. I, I believe that you 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 have you have passed through the system you know how it entails you know certain key things somebody is watching you right now maybe the person is also in university level 200 level 300 he's about to he's looking for scholarships within only what you have said what what can you say that the person should be doing right now that really helped you yeah what really helped me is that um if you're in level 200 you're in level 300 level 100 make sure that you have in as much as we have bad people, we have good people, we have genuine people. So you must be able to search for that, that within your department, within the program that you are doing, even if it's outside your department, who are the genuine people, who are the good people that are like very focused to like, I, when I was also like growing up, I was also mentoring some people at the SHS. And so now they are very, very happy that they met me at the university too. I did same for people. So there are some people that um, as you are in level 100, level 200, level 300, they are ahead of you. Make sure that you have a good relationship with them. Because like with your, some of your assignments, some of your project works, they are going to help you. Some advices, they are going to help you in your courses because you know that you want to travel. And if you don't get good grade, it's going to like affect you. 
So why don't you leverage on people who are good academically, who are good in this field, who are good in this course, so that they are going to help you in that area? Because there is a the big picture ahead of you, and mm. you don't want to make a mistake. And also, you must also leverage on lecturers, CAs. So the lecturers, some are good in quote and quote, some are also, yeah, we know. So you have to leverage on those, like building relationship with them. Because as you are about to apply to school, you need their recommendations. You mm. need their advice. You need their signature. So you must be like nice to them. You must be um, 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 open to them. You must ask them questions. Visit their offices. Like, op Let them know you. That is it. Let them know you. Mm. Okay, so after the university, how were you leveraging? Where did you do your national service and how come you applied to U.S. schools? And who told you certain schools and how were you looking for schools? Because I know that most of the business courses, you need to get GMAT. And where, why did you write any GMAT? Somebody's watching us, he's in business background. They want to also come. So after school, what did you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. So after school, um, that was... Uh... 2022, when I graduated, um, there was opportunity for me to work um, at the DV, at the DV, that is the car services at the uh, airport area. So I had yeah. opportunity to do my service there. So I, I really wanted to do that. Yeah, even though I'm going to get um, like some money for my application, because I know I'm going to do application after school and yeah. I have completed. But I wanted to also use the leverage of the lecturers. So I applied, um, um, I, I, I told three lecturers about my, my purpose that this is what I want to do and this is where I wanted to go. So I told them and two were very good to accept me to be a teaching assistant. So I was teaching and research assistant as my national service um, at the University of um, Education, now called Amstead. Yeah. So... Oh, I was okay. at the business department with oh, okay. two yeah. So because you, you, of recommendations and you because be, of... You became teaching assistant? Yeah, teaching assistant. Mm. And okay. to apply to like the university in the US, being, it's not like a man that everybody must be a teaching assistant, but being that really push you ahead in, in terms of like the recommendation, some documentations, and some information it's easy to get that from the university if you are already there because every day you are going there so it's not like maybe you are at accra and your school is in tamale you have to take a bus you have to take a flight or something that in and out will be something else and um i always wanted to like stay there so that i will also use the little bit of the wi-fi because mm -hmm. <laughs> with the app <laughs> yeah wi-fi <laughs> yeah with the application, you use money for bundles and other stuff. And um, getting far five now is not that huge. So if you have a free Wi-Fi in the school, you have letters, you have some information, some documentation, it will really help you in order to achieve um, what you want to do. And you asked mm. about my scholarship as like... Uh, so how the school, the school search, how were you looking for schools in the business field? Oh, okay. So with my school search, um i can't remember i started it a week a week was it a week to my final exams at the undergrads i started searching for schools that was when uh the fred effect kings for Dunina, they started to like um post some videos they were doing videos on youtube so for me the mo I, I have subscribed so the moment they put the video i'm there i'm the first person to watch because that is what I wanted to achieve. So when we were posting the videos, I began to understand. I was watching their videos, taking my time. Okay, this is how they do it. This is how they do it. Okay. Then I was researching it using Google. So I type it. I type um, MBA schools in Ohio, MBA schools in New York, MBA schools in this with scholarship. So a lot of schools will pop up from the Google. Then if if you watch the videos, you know that you have to send a, a, an email and let them know that there is you and you are interested to apply to their school and this field in this middle. Whilst I was waiting to write my exams, I was not thinking about my final exam. I was thinking about applying to school. Mm. So the moment that I finished my exams, all my time, because when you complete school, you wait for a time in November to start your service. 
that was when I got all my screws. Okay. So I had almost 50 screws <laughs> to send an email. You have you have reset for 50 screws. 50 screws. Somebody is watching us. When you reset three screws, you say, Peter, I can't find school in US. What advice are you going to give it to the person? Yeah, there are a lot of schools in the US. And um, for for you to be able to find the screw, you must know that this thing is a wreck. It's a wreck that like it will pay. So for me, I call it a Yajuma Ubenya It is a wreck that you are going to wreck and you are going to get a benefit from it in future. So you must stick to your 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 phone, your laptop. If you get any bundle, if you get any free time, any um, um, Wi-Fi or data or something, search, search, keep searching, keep searching. And when you search, you are going to find it. It won't be easy for the beginning, but the moment that you find the secret and how to search about it, you the are, more you are The more you are engaging, the more you get the ideas. And yeah, the because more you are watching videos sure. and everything. I was searching so, and I, I, so, I, I got, yeah. So you, you got 50 schools yeah. to apply. Yeah. So how are you sending the email? Somebody is watching us. You don't know how to send emails. What, 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 how, what strategy were you using? So um, when you graduate, you don't have like, uh, your transcript is not ready. So to send an email, you must attach your transcript, your CV, and let's say a statement of purpose if you want. So what I was doing is that, you see, on your, on your portal, you can print your like unofficial transcript, which is not yet uh, being preset by like the screw. So um, I, I, I printed my own and I scanned it as a PDF. But then I already have my CV because when I was even in form um, 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 level 200, level 300, level 400, I was building my CV. So by then I already have my CV because I was always thinking ahead to, to achieve something great. So I sent the code email, um, hi, um, hi, good morning graduate uh, admission office then i come i am maxwell Oseyeboa from the investor of this and this and this in ghana i graduated this year and i was looking through um your social media your 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 website and i found out that this your program in mba let's say accounting let's say marketing let's say human resource really fits into my group because when i was growing up i wanted to um do this i wanted to do that my gpa is this and attaches my cv this is a school that i really want to um join i can't wait to join you i'll be happy if you respond back thank you regards or um, say, um sincere or something then i'll attach my cv then my transcript then i'll send so i'll be sent it's a job it's not easy you i'll be sending i'll be sending good feedback some some, some will reply some will not reply that but is you it keep sending Mm. That that is my goal because I just need one yes. I just need one yes. That is all what you. You just you need one yes, schools. one school to give you yes. That's what you because you can't come to two schools abroad. It's yeah. only one school that's going to accept you. That is it. So you must look for that school, and getting to know that school it will take you a time. It will cost you. You will feel broken hearted because you thought that oh this school, like the requirement is not that big, but yes the response or the email that they gave you, Charlie. It can break you, but yet you are you are a goal-oriented person, you are a focused person. That is what you want to achieve. Mm. Go, go, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So now you are sending emails and those kind of stuff. Which school did you apply and how did you get a scholarship? Yeah, so I applied to let's say 15 schools out of the 50 for the response that I, I had. So I no, first of all, you got 50 schools to apply. Yeah, and I send the emails. And you send them emails. And so the feedback. out of the 50, you saw that you want to apply to 15 university in the U.S. Yeah. And out of the 15, uh -huh. So out of the 15, I had um 10 admissions, then 5 rejections. You had 10 admissions, yeah. 5 rejections. Rejections, yeah. Okay, go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my first rejection was from the country that you are you are in. Canada, you know that's <laughs> um, um Queen's business. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. They said that Canada, they want to give me full funding because because, because Canada, the the rejection in Canada is more than US. I'm telling you, people <laughs> have gotten rejection here. It's not easy at all, my brother. 
Yeah. Yeah, of course, because sometimes because the country is not the the school here is not as big as uh, you know um US. You know, Canada population is like 40, 41 million. And even California is like the population in California is like Canada, the whole Canada combined. Just that Canada is the second largest country in the world. Yeah. So um yeah. So so, the, the, so I had that rejection. So it it that was my first rejection. That was um January 2023, first week of when we entered the year. My heart, Charlie, my heart. It was boom, 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 boom. First rejection. First, upon all the application you did, first rejection was from Canada. From Canada. Okay. So I was I was asking myself. Ah. Please uh, wait. If you are if you are joining us, this is Maswell. He's in you know University of Dating, USA. And he's on full scholarship. He's sharing his story. I just wanted to share this live video so that I can able to inspire other people. Just power tap the love button and then we go. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, thank you very much for liking. This is Peter Bewa, inspiring Africa with Peter Bewa. Yes, yeah, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my brother, so go on. Uh huh. So, like, after that, I, I, I have already applied to the 15 schools. So, the next school was um university of wisconsin Milwaukee. that that was the the school that i really wanted to like gain admission to and that's good you 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 love the school wisconsin. yeah then i i had admission so after my uh, first rejection the next one was acceptance from university of um wisconsin Milwaukee in the u.s mm -hmm. so that school gave me a, a mba uh mba marketing but and were you writing G G R or G Math or something like that, or did they waive it for you? Oh, okay. So with the application for like most business, they mostly require G Math, G R, and um sometimes to they need three to five years working experience because most most MBA or business programs for masters is like those who are already working, those who like have some experiences. So okay. that was it. So for me, um, what I leveraged was that I was using something I called JMAT River. So the JMAT River that uh, I, I did was that I type like Microsoft Word, I type, I am so so and so so and so. I did business in um, uh, my senior high school. I did this course, um, this subject, accounting, this and this, which is like in the field of mathematics, in the field of like, uh, I did economics. On my undergrad, too, I did quantitative techniques. I did um, um, research methods. I did this. I did so. I did all these courses in order to like. I'm just framing a, a sentence, a story, something to to tell them that I. You already um, have the the thing that they are looking for in the game. So, so I, if they can wave it for you, I deserve the waiver. That is it. So some schools wave it for me. Some schools will not. Some schools will not. So you, I you use that one letter and I save mm -hmm. it as a PDF. And um, my CV, and also I was also using something I called intelligent statement of purpose, like touching statement of purpose. Something that will touch somebody when the person is reading is wow. Mm. Because statement of purpose also has feelings. Sometimes somebody will today I I wrote something on my wall and people were reading it and say Ah oh, Peter I'm inspired Peter. It's not because of my my handsomeness because of the west because the more people are reading it the more it's sunk into their they say no the way i call we are smart it's 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 quite different that like, is it. so yeah that is it so i was using that um i watched videos i was on linkedin i was like searching and i was asking a lot of questions from other people how do i write statement of purpose how do i go about this and I was watching videos, different kinds of videos. A day, I can watch 50 videos. Because I don't know, I don't know what time to use it for again. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to do. Like, I want to do. So, what? I, why don't I invest my time and resources and money in this and get the best out of it? Mm. Because I can't do something mini, 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 like little, little, and expect something big. I have to go in all out. Go in oh. all out. And whatever that will come out, I know that I did my best. If it's no, I know that I did my very best of it so i use that kind of um um uh, so most of the school so the, the one way that helped you to wave the gmat is that you send an email to them that you have you have the background you have you have done this course you have mathematics statistics. Sure. 
accountant sure. general, whatever it is, sure, sure. then you send it to them and then some will wave it for some you, some will, will not wave. wave. Oh, then okay. Some will wave, some will not wave. So I'll focus on those who have waved. Okay. Yeah, because I'm just I'm just looking for my one yes. So okay. I'll proceed and I I, I I went. So the investor of Wisconsin, they have a lot of scholarship there and they have teaching assistants. Since I was a teaching assistant, it's not easy for a business um school to have or business university to have a teaching uh a teaching and research assistant within the business like department. It's very, very hard. That is the reason why most people are not getting scholarship for the business field because I did a lot of research and I know that it's hard to get like scholarship for business and I was not getting that, but that school was having teaching assistants there and they have a lot of courses that I can teach. So um, I applied for the assistantship and I did an interview with them. How's my other 14 application is already in. So I was waiting. I was waiting for feedbacks. I was waiting for feedback. Then another school also came in. That is University of Purdue. University of Purdue. Uh, Purdue, yes, Purdue. Yeah, they also gave me a blue tick. They 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 almost treat me from rejection. Strong one. Pa. Then <laughs> then um other schools also came in. That was Indiana State's investor. So Indiana State Invest also gave me an MBA. If some some people are watching us, he's mentioned some of the schools. So if you're also in business, you'll be writing the same schools. Then you go and do your research. Send them an email like what he did. You know, this is the reason why we we, we normally come here to share our story so that we can be able to. But people will not, because they are look, they are waiting for Peter Bell to give you the schools. Me too. School in Chroma, Canada and the US is not for my father. The thing we say, all the school days here. So if somebody is mentioning some of the schools, somebody is in business field. So he's saying that most of the schools waive the GMAT because... In US and Canada, majority of the schools require you to bring GMAT. So if you were able to use this strategy to waive the GMAT, you too, you'll be writing. You you write, you keep learning, keep sharpening yourself, keep building your, your knowledge, keep building, invest in yourself. This is what you have been doing. So my, my brother. Yeah, bro. Um, so you you had your admission. So which could uh, which could give you the, the funding? Um that was uh, University of um, Dayton, where I am now, and okay. University of Indiana State. Indiana State also gave you funding. Yeah. So for the Indiana State funding, it was like, uh, okay, getting the scholarship as a business student, what uh, really helped me was within the school, there are some offices. Within the school, there are some department That is not a business department. So if I, I was emailing the school of business, I am actually so, so, so I have gained admission. I'm 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 trying to apply for some scholarship. Can you recommend some scholarship? They say no, we don't have funding in this, uh, we don't have department. funding in our department. Yeah. Then I know that we have different funding in different areas where people are not looking to. So we yeah. have like the diversity and inclusion, we have sports or athletes, we have bookstore, we have library, uh, library. library. So we have administrative work, yeah. dean, dean graduate as administrative assistant, assistant, dean office. Yeah. So when I get to know this information, I apply to almost all the schools that I had the admission. Almost 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I email them personally. <laughs> Even if you are in the office, I will go and pick your email. Then I'll email you. Sometimes I was not getting um, feedback. I will call you. I will buy MTN and I will call you. <laughs> Because if you don't go extra mile, nobody is going to like do anything. Because you are not the only one applying to this. School. That is it. In fact, okay, your class. How many are you in the class? Uh, in my in my department, we are like four hundred and ten. No, no, no. Your class. Your class. As in, uh, undergrad. No, 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 undergrad. I'm I'm talking about US right now. Your class. How many 30, are you in your 30, class? 30. You're thirty student. So the whole world, 2023, they are selecting only 30 students. Yeah, yeah. And you, you finish Winneba. Even your seniors who were finished in 2012, 2011, 2013, 20, they are also some day Ghana where they are, they have been applying. And they are selecting only 30 students. Nigerians are coming. One state in Nigeria is bigger than Ghana. Yeah. yeah, yeah. South <laughs> Africa, they are also coming. Senegal, Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lesotho. China, 
even US people are also applying. Canada is also applying. China, Russia, all these international students are also coming. So for them to select you to be part of this group, you need to demonstrate strong passion and what? Resiliency. So my brother, continue. Mm. Yeah, so I was going through such offices, like I was doing um, emails. I was sending emails to such offices, such departments that have funding scholarship that are not in the business department. Then after absending that emails, then I will attach a cover letter and my CV. A cover letter is do that office let's say the bookstore the bookstore a cover letter graduate um, um assistant cover letter which means that you are like expressing yourself as in the qualities that you have the skills that you have the knowledge that you have the experience that you have that you can do this job you can do this um, um scholarship job or position that is there so even though i haven't worked at the library i haven't worked as like a, a resident or a whole um coordinator before but within my cv within my cover letter i chip in certain things like oh okay. during my undergrads i was part of the committees where we, we were like part of like the whole of this university and i was part of the committee and my duties were this and this and this of it is have given me the leverage to have experience with students to interact with students to, to know the needs of students to put students priority at, at a, a higher um, priority so these were the things that I was doing for my cover letters and I was sending, I was sending. Then I had feedback for interviews, Zoom interviews. Yeah. Mm, okay. So now dating, the dating scholarship, that means you, you are teaching assistant, right? No, for the dating is uh, graduate academic affairs. That is the graduate school. The graduate school. So yeah. you're not teaching assistant, just that you work with the department. You work the with the office. Yeah, or the office of the graduate school. Okay. So that one, it, it came with... Uh, tuition waiver and stipend is that what yeah so for the school fees it was um for the year for here for the year is thirty six thousand as mb thirty six thousand dollars mm -hmm. and when the funding came it covers everything mm -hmm. so there was no deficit for me to use to go for my visa because when you are going for visa you must use a bank statement showing that if there yeah, was deficit. There was no deficit for, for, for that. Mm. So yeah, do they give you stipend every month? Yeah, stipends. Yes, yeah, stipends. They they, mm. they give they will give you one year. So it's a one year uh, position. So every two weeks they will they will give you a stipend. So in a month you are going to receive that kind of like stipends. Oh, okay. Okay. So you were pay you now you are paying two weeks. Every, yeah, every two, two weeks, weeks. they, yeah, they, for, they yeah. pay you. Yeah, they will pay you every two weeks. That's fine. Okay, now. When you had a scholarship, getting date and do you, can you take us through your interview as well? Yeah. Okay. So after after um, first June, first June is when I had my school scholarship. So, so it was like two months for you to come to US because most of yeah. the US you need to come in August. Yeah, I started this application very early when I was graduating in uh, um, November, October, November, twenty twenty two. But I had my funding in first June, meaning. From that time, almost eight months, broken heart actually missed out the application. I'm not getting my one year. I'm not getting the full scholarship. I'm not getting my scholarship. So it wasn't easy, but you must put yourself together. And th those th those times too, I was also working as a teaching assistant, going to class to teach, like going marking um, students. So you are still in academia. Yeah, doing that kind of stuff. Whilst within yourself, you want one year. I always check in my email because i was using the email as whatsapp i was using mm. the email as whatsapp so um after getting the first scholarship from the university of dating in first june i begin to um buy my uh, mrf from gt bank yeah i begin to buy my mrf from gt bank that was um 160 dollars then it was once that now it had increased to 180 something 185 or something so when i went to gt bank in the doom commerce and i bought it then I begin to start like filling my DS-160, searching for dates. So what helped me with the date is that I always watch videos and people know things that you don't know. So if you are open to learn, you are going to know. So I begin to know the secret that if you are able to like um, uh, use something we call emergency um, date request, you have the reach to like get a date because 
I didn't know that you have to apply for emergency. Then I get to know that you must type in some words and mm -hmm. add your scholarship letter, your I-20, and your school um, admission letter in order to request for like um, emergency dates. So during June, I used that one to request for a date. Then they accepted me. So I, I was also applying with some of my friends. So I also helped them in order to also get their emergency date approved. Because I, I found that way is that if you are able to like buy the MRU fee and you have all these documents and like you have, let's say, 60 days to enter the U.S., you'll be able to get the uh -huh. emergency dates in order to get it. If getting date was not easy, we were not sleeping. But the moment that I found that route, then I begin. And for dates, each week they are, they are, they are, they are, they are um, uh, releasing dates. They are releasing dates each week. So, as I was, I, I'm telling you, like each 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 steps, I always put myself like in all. So I dedicated almost full day each day in like getting dates. So I opened my 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 laptop, I opened my phone, and my friends, we are we, like we are waiting for day to be released. So when I whenever I see a date, I have to be able to pick. So I was able to get like more dates in July, in August. And mm. I didn't know which one to choose. So I choose the July 27th. So I had a date with using... So emergency. you you go into the interview. How was the preparation? When you went there, the line, everything, your first time? Yeah. Um, when you reach Cantonment and you are going for the interview in US, um, Bazi, the moment that you reach there, you know that, yeah, you have come. Like, you have come. The kind of pressure there. The, the, the presence people are making calls, people are quiet, some are shivering. Yeah, uh, uh, people are very like low, some are also like happy that they are going for the interview, some are also they don't know. Like, I put in myself that everybody within the line because the line was very long. I was, um, the first going to be interviewed in the morning, seven, yeah, their first interview starts at seven, so I was part of the seven. I wanted to go first and like just, just go my way. Because mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to get the visa. So um, the moment that you reach there, the line is very like big. But everybody is like making like, oh, oh, they are okay. No, nobody is okay. Nobody is okay. Nobody. So when you when when like let's say your body catches or touch somebody, you see that the person is shivering. Like the person is like the person is not okay. But everybody is living dressed like cold. Some are I didn't take in any clothes. Some are wearing uh, sneakers, some are wearing kaba and those kind of stuff. They are all dressed nice, cool, yeah. going for interview. But they are so okay. it, it, you, you enter the building. So when I enter the building, um, so like you are going for interview, so you make sure that all your documents are intact. So I check before going. All my documents were intact. Everything was intact. Um, I went there. Then since I was early in the morning, I saw one guy. When we were in the queue, this guy, he was wearing suit. He, he wanted to be the first person to be interviewed. I don't know if he had a dream or vision or something. He was fighting to be the first person to be interviewed. So when he went, one, one minute, then the guy was smiling. Yes! Ah! So I asked uh, two guys in front of me, what, what happened? Is that no, the you mean, you mean You mean when the guy entered, when the guy entered and he came back, he was laughing. Yeah, that he had gotten the visa. He has gotten the visa. Hmm. So I asked. He didn't spend much time. So I asked two guys in front of me that what happened, and they said that oh, that is the interview. So I asked. So this is the whole about the interview. So that is it. So he went there. So that is it. Oh, no problem. We will go. We will go. So I was in the queue. Then when it's about to reach my turn, I went with a friend. Um, he is in Pennsylvania University. So, um, he had a full scholarship. So he went first. He was in front of me. So he went first with an uh, Indian lady there. He got his visa approved. But when he was answering his question, he was shivering. He had full scholarship with excess of $5,000. So for him, his scholarship is over. <laughs> he has got his scholarship and even excess. Excess of $5,000. Because for him, I know that for him, he really worked. Like, this guy really worked. Uh, like somebody like you see this person is working for the application so he really worked for it and he had his visa so when he was going then fast i go to the same person 
that he uh, because there was a lot of people like five lines of um the views who are interviewing so i went there then she asked me a lady she asked me S uh, give me your uh, scholarship letter i i gave it to her give me your uh, no the moment you read there he asked you give me your scholarship letter he, yeah. he didn't say anything he said give me your scholarship letter your scholarship letter give me your uh, admission letter so when i gave i gave my scholarship letter she was looking through because it wasn't like that um, um open so she didn't understand but for me going i printed all my emails with this crew i printed it <laughs> i actually i printed you, all my you emails. printed all the emails and everything so when she was looking at i i i could see that she wasn't okay with like what she was she wasn't seeing it was why so i gave her the um the, so can so i give you the in, email instead of you to give her the the admission letter you gave you gave her the uh emails <laughs> I, I i gave her the admission letter and the emails too so <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> so was it, was, was it because you have pressure yeah, or... uh, no 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 um sometimes sometimes like you, you you know the atmosphere it's like a friendly conversation so it's like a friendly conversation so she wasn't hard on me she wasn't hard on me but for me what i prepared for the visa interview with why are you here and those kind of stuff but when i read there it wasn't like that oh a friend of mine is here uh bismarck forcing yeah uh, is, is he also in the us or uh he, i know he'll be coming this year i know uh, i was with him he was he, he was also a teaching assistant with, oh. with me there so first and then you see you see your friend here you see yeah. one day first thing you two will come to us and i will interview you okay yeah definitely okay okay so um when um i was preparing for my interview i learned all these questions but when i got there for the me what i can say that they didn't ask you why are you here why something you... happened yeah something happened with me because what i can say is that it's the grace of god that happened even though oh. i have full scholarship but when i reached there and she was about to ask me why this university she almost said it she even said it why this? so when i was about to start to speak then somebody came in somebody within the within the um the um, embassy he was there a guy came and tapped the indian lady. no so the you were doing the interview and the lady was interviewing you then yeah. he was about to ask you a question yeah then one guy that we are working in the u.s in the embassy office, came, came in and, and he tapped, tapped and covered so he, he turned like this he turned mm -hmm. like this and she said that oh please give me one minute then she went out so, ah, so when... listen <laughs> oh okay do you know what happened it was an angel it was an angel who entered the guy yeah to come to the view so that he could be able to disrupt the mind that so the woman said and the, the viewer to, uh, told you that wait i am coming yeah so you are still standing there i was still standing then i said i've got a visa because the moment that she came so oh i'm so i'm so sorry give me your scholarship letter give me your admission letter give me your i-20 so when i was presenting all these documents then after that i add my um the email that i printed then she said that oh okay then she looked at me are you married then i also look at myself like you see like i was like you don't have anything no so no because uh she was even laughing because for sure that i'm married because i'm just a young gentleman who is like coming to like live a life and she asked me that i said no then the next one was that um do you have any like case or something i said no i'm approving your visa that was all so i didn't spend uh, after she went but i didn't spend more than one minute day it was just fast because there's a lot of people a lot of queue behind me so it was very fast so when i got it i shouted yes and people within the office within the embassy they said gentlemen relax and they said, no i know what i've gotten i know what i've got <laughs> when you got a visa you said yes yes like it was like annoying scene there they didn't uh, know the other know. one was looking at you yeah i don't care I, you don't care. ah Charlie. <laughs> my bread <laughs> So you you went and everything fine blah blah blah. So now um now you are in US. Yeah. Somebody is watching us. He want to also come to US to study. He want to also come to study. He want to also to come and learn and everything. You got to US and everything. How is the US system as a student coming? What should a person prepare? Uh, He's coming to US. Now yeah. you have been in the system. 
you know the work that you can work the rules given the action and inaction of international students the, the 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 laws of u.s immigration system and everything if somebody's watching us and he's coming what advice will you give to the person yeah what i can say is that um if like you want to apply to u.s canada or any other school um Hi. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I think the, the network is um I'm coming. But, but but can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so this is Maswell, she's United States of America and um is investor of dating with the full scholarship that he's what sharing his story with us. My name is Peter Bewa, and I believe that. I think he, he got a call. I believe that it will help other people to also, you know, we are inspiring other people um, for them to learn quality information and, you know, absorb certain things that can really help you to achieve your goals that can really help you. And I believe it is very um, good to make sure we all do certain things for ourselves. I'll end the interview here. I think he has a problem with um, maybe somebody called him. So my name is Peter Bewa. This week, I'll be sharing a flyer that we are going to help thousands of people in Africa, in Ghana, Nigeria, in as much as you're in Africa, you are going to learn, especially if you want to win scholarship. I am bringing someone from United States of America, PhD student, and I'll also be a facilitator. The fact is that we want to help thousands of people. I've received a lot of emails from all over the world. People, Peter, I want PhD, I want university, I want masters, I want this and this. You can't get me one-on-one. -on -one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a workshop that I am going to help to teach people, thousands of people. Those of you are interested of PhD, those of you are interested of graduate students uh, coming to do masters abroad, especially US and Canada, we are bringing you a program. And um, the reason why I'm doing this is that it's not because we really want, we want people who are serious to be part. It won't be free workshop you need to register to be part. I just want you to inform your family members. If your dad, uncle watching me, I don't know where you're watching me from. You have a niece, you have a nephew, you have a brother who want to, you You have a son or maybe a daughter who want to come and study in US and Canada or abroad, how you can able to secure scholarship, school applications and everything that we can able to do it. So the workshop will be in June and July. It will be on weekends, Saturdays, two 30 days in June, two 30 days in July. How to send co emails, how to do your CV, everything will be how to apply for schools, PAD, how you can able to get scholarship and everything. We'll be teaching over there. The registration will be $50. That will be for if you want to be part of the class. And it is four classes. This is not just a one short workshop. You are coming in four times. So we will give you some of the schools. You will tell us some of the schools that you need and then you start from there. Okay, Maswa. Yeah. Yeah, so you can talk now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm. I'm listening. Oh, okay. So like if you are like uh, a student or you have you have graduated or you want to apply to um the US or the Canada, what I can say is that um this is a work. Uh it's not an easy thing. So you must just accept that this is a work, like it's a whole work on its own. It's not easy. If somebody tells you it's easy, um, the person is lying. If you are going to do it very, very well, it's not easy. So it's a whole lot of work. Um, and one thing that I can also say is that um, gather your documents very well, review your documents very well. And if you don't understand anything, ask, ask, ask. Be somebody oh. who, who wants to like achieve something. So always ask questions. And the, when you are asking for a help or something, make sure that you have done something, you have done a research, you have also done something so that the person will know that, oh, you're also doing something. The person can come in and help you in that. And one thing I can also say is that applying to the US or coming to school here, um, you need to like know certain things like the Microsoft Word, the Excel, the PowerPoint, um, SPSS and other programs. You, you must be able to know because 
that is what we are going to do when we are doing an exams we are going to type some exams uh like you are going to use your laptop to do and if you don't know how to type meaning even though you know the answer even though you know how the answer will, but with the delay time will catch up with you so um one thing that i can also say is that work on your skills that is your communication skills your uh, microsoft word skills your excel your powerpoint these are the things that you are going to do here so make sure that you watch videos you go to youtube you learn all these things little by little little by little little by little you'll be able to know and for the school to um search on google search on youtube find your school don't follow what people are doing find your own school maybe that school is the one that's going to give you yes find your own school don't create yeah. a lot of competition for you find your own school if you dig you get your one yes if you work hard on it you are going to get your one yes yeah okay 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 this is muscle and thank you very much for joining me muscle thank God you bless bro you. thank you and i appreciate now if you are in the us how many hours can you work and where can you work also oh, as a student here you are uh like by compare by law to work 20 hours a week that is when school are in section so if like we are in, we, you are not like on vacation as in for summer summer that is start from may to july 29th or july 30th so only may to july july ending that is where international students can work 40 hours in the u.s but if you are an international student you can work only 20 hours and that 20 hours must be within the school not outside the school not outside the school so if somebody is working outside the school then it means that the person is doing in quote in quote mm, yeah. okay 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 mm -hmm. that's fine okay thank you very much myself for joining me i'll join you later god bless you okay and thank I, you do, do you have anyone that you want to greet some people are watching you oh you I, have... I i i i greet um um people my my people and my friends and anybody who is like especially in the business field that doesn't have hope that is going to work out what i'm going to tell you is that this life is not a race this life is not a race know mm. what is ahead of you find that one and remember that everything is time everything is time when is your time it's going to happen but before you know this is your time you must work hard you must give your all you must work extra mile and know that this is what i did god this is what i did and in this journey you cannot ignore God from it because for me, I said that it was grace. It was God that came through for me. Thank you, everyone. Um, greeting to University of Education. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. This is Godfrey. Um, Godfrey, thank you very much. So that's Godfrey. He shared his story and everything. So it can really help you. Now, um, on June and July, I'm bringing you a mentorship program that is going to help. It's a workshop. A scholarship workshop and admission you are going to empower thousands of people through my program that i'm going to bring people from usa phd student so if you're interested of phd you have to win scholarship how to send emails everything that you need to know you need to come to the workshop if you have a friend or if you're also a teaching assistant whether you are finished school you're interested of seeking scholarship admissions and everything schools to apply any advice that you want we are bringing you a workshop and our workshop if you're in ghana you're going to pay 500 cities and other people all over now i i know the system is very difficult but not withstanding we can't just because facilitators there you need to pay them you need to do a lot of things people managing a zoom uh, you know a whole lot of things so if you want to be part of it you you need to pay that is 500 uh, 500 cities and if you're outside Ghana, you pay $45. Yeah. So thank you very much. The flyer and everything will be there. Registration has already started. People have already um, started with the booking, but I need to post it here so that it can be able to help you. So if you have such, send me a message and I'm not able to reply. I'm quite very busy. I just want to combine each and everyone so that we can be able to teach you. So we'll be doing it in June and July so that in September you start the school process so that we can be able to see your CV, statement of purpose, everything that you need to ship, and then it is going to help you. The registration will start, people have already registered, so it will start this week. If you're interested of applying to schools, getting full scholarships and everything, I just want you to do this and then you register and depart. We are not here to amass what for ourselves, but you know, you're coming for knowledge. And people who know the knowledge, they need to be also eating as well. We have been doing videos here. This is just a workshop for people who are really serious and they want to be part. 
if you are interested, we will do it in June. So you have from May, from this month to June, so that you need to prepare your money and everything. You make the payment, you get your, your spot and everything, the registration and everything. Then you will start in June. So June, July, it is the school applications and everything. You will understand the process, how to apply master's, PhD, undergrad. So if you know anyone, tell the person that we are bringing a whole world workshop. And this one, we are anticipating a lot of people to be part of this program. Thank you very much. My name is Peter Bell. I love you all. Bye-bye.